Hostile possession of the sea. What meanest thou by seizing the whole earth? Because I do it with a petty ship, I'm called a robber. Whilst thou, who does the same with a great fleet, art styled emperor. And old Saint Augustine thought that was a pretty smart answer. Cause there are pirates and emperors, but they're really the same thing. When they go and try to reach the same end by using the same means, whether they do it big or they do it small, from a little tiny boat or from a hallowed hall. Speaking of bullies, what would you say about a gang of vicious, low-down thugs who were trying to overthrow the government by attacking undefended civilian targets like schools, farms, hospitals, and outreach centers? Why, I'd say they were terrorists. I'm sorry. The correct answer is freedom fighters. At least that's what you called these thugs, a.k.a. the Contras, when you funded their campaign of terror and indiscriminate killing to overthrow the government of Nicaragua. There was trouble in the land of Nicaragua in the 80s, it's true. And Uncle Sam has always said this kind of thing just really won't do. So he paid for a bag full of dirty tricks and turned killers into heroes with a PR blitz. Well, freedom's sure a funny word for what the Contras did do. You know, there are pirates and emperors, but they're really the same thing. They just want to let freedom ring Well, they do it big or they do it small But only one goes down when they break the law While the big one claims This really don't apply to me The funny thing about pirates and emperors Is that they often start out as pals Who get into a tiff somehow and end up enemies You mean like Lex Luthor and Superman? Yeah, except Lex Luthor was a nice guy before he lost all his hair. Whereas Manuel Noriega, Saddam Hussein, and Osama bin Laden were all known thugs and mass murderers when they were on the CIA payroll. That's why they got the job. Either that, or Uncle Sam is just a really bad judge of character. I don't understand why this keeps happening to me. Well, not so long ago we thought Saddam here was a pretty swell guy. We helped him get the goods to make the Ayatollah Khomeini cry. But Uncle Sam decided it was not Saddam's fate to be the leader of his Middle Eastern client state that was sitting on top of a big, huge oil supply. Big and little thugs got thuggery in common, even if one's got stars and stripes on him. Uh, bully is as bully does, that's plain to see. Cause if it looks like a duck and acts like a duck and like a duck, it probably is a duck. You know, a rose is a rose, no matter how much it stinks. I resent that comment. I'm not a duck. I'm an anti-duck. I'm a counter-duck. Well, I'm more of a mallard, really. Why, I'm fighting a war on ducks. Any ducks come around here, I'm gonna blast them. China was able to turn the corner and become the leading world superpower because they have a police state and they are able to force people to stop reproducing. Dr. Eric R. Pianca. The eugenics movement has now shaken off much of its Nazi baggage and is using people's legitimate concern about the environment as a cloak to conceal their real agenda. Everyone wants to breathe clean air and have good water. But the controllers of the environmental movement have done nothing but co-op people's concerns and parlay it into support for global policies that further destabilize the third world and create untold misery. Phony environmental and conservation groups are now the biggest private landowners in the world. They lobby government to take property away from local populations only to develop it themselves later. When the U.S. military dumps millions of gallons of nerve gas on the east coast of the U.S., they don't say a word. Thousands of companies are creating transgenetic cross-species hybrids 
splicing plants, animals, and insects, and releasing the new organisms into the global biosphere, vandalizing the very genetic code of the planet. And large environmental organizations do nothing. The corporate elite of the planet intensified their push for a global taxation system with a year-long buildup to the live Earth hysteria held on July 7, 2007 on seven continents. World leaders announced that saving the Earth was the new organizing principle for humanity and hailed it as the planet's new religion. They claimed that CO2, which plants breathe, was killing the Earth and that we must reduce the number of children we have to curtail our carbon footprint. Countries across the world marked the day by passing new carbon tax schemes and raising taxes on gasoline, natural gas, and electricity. It is a scientific fact that the sun is the main driver of planetary climate, and the measurements are clear. The sun is becoming hotter, brighter. It has been slowly increasing thermal output in the last hundred years, causing warming not just on Earth, but throughout the solar system. But the scientific facts and even the order of the planets didn't matter to one of the chief organizers of live Earth, David Mayer de Rothschild, heir to the British arm of the Rothschild fortune when we spoke to him. When I called Rothschild on the order of the planets, he just laughed, thinking the audience wouldn't get it. He continued to count on the population's ignorance and claimed that the global warming lobby has nothing to do with carbon taxes. I guess he hadn't spoken with his good personal friend, Al Gore. Global warming, the time for debate is over. But I think what you have to realize is that, that being environmentally sensitive and making money aren't mutually exclusive. There's a lot of money to be made in, 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 in addressing this issue. But you guys are gobbling up all the world's concern to just simply line your pockets and make kids read your book in schools and do all this. It's a business, just like you said, Rothschild. It's not. Do you think I make any money out of this? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Your great, great, great grand, your, your money changing ancestors did. They're in Germany, Red Shield, and I'm calling you out, Red Shield. We know it's a scam. A pollution-based tax system, principally CO2. We're causing it mainly, vast majority of it. The consequences are bad and will be catastrophic unless we act. Uh, the polar ice caps of Mars have, are receding at several miles a year, m much faster than ours, and that the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are melting. In fact, several of their moons were ice and are now liquid seas. Now, how are SUVs causing that, David Rothschild? That's because those planets are closer to the sun, my friend. <laughs> no, um, Jupiter yeah. and Saturn are not closer to the sun. Neither is Mars. Yes, sir. I think you'll find, right, that the very simple matter, and what I wanted to say, and this is my final point, forget your taxation theory, because actually it's not taxation. Put a price on the carbon. A tax is the best way. Cap and trade can also do it. If there were a carbon-based tax, mm -hmm. would there be a need for a, a, an economy-wide cap and trade system? They are not either or. We can do both. I am in favor of both. The architects of the New World Order are in a race to complete the structure of world government so they can suppress the independent development of technologies that threaten their monopoly of power, while at the same time steering new developments in the direction the architects chart for humanity. The technocrats call their governing system the final revolution because in the past, empires were enforced militarily. Now enforcement is primarily psychological and economic, and society itself is a construct of the elite who operate outside the controlled paradigm and control the civilization within, just as a child maintains the environment of a fish tank. We are like lab rats living out our entire existence, never questioning the confines of the cage or the scientists who experiment on us.